Hey everybody, everybody, it's your main man, Anthony Brogdon. Whoa, I got a good looking lady on the channel today that gonna blow your mind. Ooh, let me tell you something. This sister so committed to giving you this black history that she's gonna share with you today that we had some technical difficulties and we worked on it together. We yes, miles we apart. We worked on it because we want you to know this information. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters around the world, I am not playing with you. I am dead serious that I'm going to find these people somehow and I'm going to let them do the talking. Just ask a couple of intelligent questions so that you can hear this Black history firsthand from the scholars, the experts, the people who have lived it, and know this information. This is my aim in life, to inspire, to educate, and entertain you, my friends. Oh, this, oh, come on now, do me a favor. Oh, oh I, I'm sorry, everybody, I forgot. I'm Anthony Brogdon. <laughs> I got excited that me and this sister connected. And, and, and so do this, my friends, hit the subscribe button on Strong Inspirations. It, it's free to watch this. This is my contribution to society, along with other things that I do. It's free. I don't ask no money. You can send a donation if you so choose. You cash app it or something else, but I, I, that's not the, the, the important piece. I'm getting blessings otherwise by having these people come on. It, 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 it warms my heart. Did you see the one out of this sister state of Florida in Gainesville? She uh, integrated a, a, a white high school in 1995. Them, them, them classmates say, you ain't crossing with us. They did everything. They called her the N-word almost daily. One day, six or seven of them dudes, the white boys, jumped on her, beat her mercifully. She stumbles into the principal's office and my man say, and you can't use my telephone. So then she goes across the street. She calls dad. Dad comes to pick her up. Now, my man, dad, is a staunch advocate for black people. He's he's president of NAACP. It's under his desire to integrate them schools, right? She calls him up. My man, you know, she's beaten up very badly. And uh, she, he says, hey, you ain't got to go back. We, we'll figure out another way to do this. Four or five days later, she said, Dad, I'm going back. They not going to beat me. Watch that video. Did you see the one I did with the guy who, he's out of New York, right? He was at a swimming pool, and he's just looking around, you know, in the park and whatever. And he sees these uh, Black people coming out of the swimming pool with them, uh, uh, air tanks on their back. He said, man, what's that all about? He said, we're divers. Since then, this guy has been doing it started his own company. It's called Diving with a Purpose. And he has been around the world looking for slave ships. Watch that video. You see the one I got with Frederick Douglass's three-time great-grandson? Oh, I didn't know that Frederick Douglass's son and Booker T. Washington's daughter got married. A lot of people ain't never heard that one. He tells it. It's on the show. Oh, man, I, I got a guy, he owns a rice farm still today where the slaves, enslaved, black folks used to farm. It's his property now. And when I was out there, he said, man, be careful because them alligators and moccasins <laughs> and snakes is around here. And the only thing that helped us make it a little bit easier is we went in the fall. It, they don't come out that time of year or something. He said, but that's what the slaves had to deal with. A lot of them lost their lives in that rice farming. That was dangerous work. Watch that video. Oh, I got them from all over. Did you see the one I got with the guy out of London, England? My man is the noted historian out of London, England, and he tells the story. Uh, th them English people, they did all they could to hide what they did. Watch that video. We're over 500 videos strong. So uh, like this one, you're going to love what she got to say. Hit the like button on this video. Hit the notifications bell for when the videos come up. You get a ding, a shock, a smoke signal. 
something tickles in your body to let you know there is new content on Strong Inspirations. And then tell somebody, don't keep it to yourself. You running around here all smart and, 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 and knowledgeable about Black history and you got it on the channel. And then you won't tell people where you got it and support the people that come on the show. Buy their books. Send them a note. Hey, I saw you. I appreciate what you do. Like this sister right here. We're going to put whatever website and stuff like that so you can stay in contact. And then a couple more housekeeping. Y'all might know, and you should know, you've been watching me. I'm so serious that I'm a filmmaker, and I did this documentary on the rise of Black business in America. It's called Business in the Black. It is good. 75 minutes. Powerful information. I go back to when slaves went to college and slaves who owned businesses. And I tell you the names of what they did. And then I interview people who family owned the business in the early 1900s. It's all here and it's streaming on Amazon. And then I don't play with you. Uh, let me tell you, I wrote a book on it. Get my book, everybody. It is very reasonably priced. It's titled Black Business Book. It's more facts than the movie. I got 40 Black-owned banks, about 50 Black-owned newspapers, all the fraternities and sororities, all the HBCUs. I list them, and I don't add no commentary because I want the fact to stand on its own merit. Mm -hmm. And if you don't believe me with the fact, I give you a reference section where I found it. Double-check it. Learn more. Get you a copy of Black Business Book. Now, a couple more things. Uh, everybody, and I tried this a couple years ago, but I'm I'm stronger today than then. And so I'm having my own Black History Festival in Quindaro, Kansas. The information will be on the website. Quindaro is the largest underground railroad in America. When the enslaved ran from Kansas City, Missouri, crossed that river, got to Kansas City, Kansas, they had a shot at it. I interviewed a guy whose great-great-grandfather did that. And when the white man came looking for him, he said, man, I ain't going back. So it's my life or yours. So what you going to do? And he ended up staying and opening up a business. We're going to see that property. Very reasonably priced, too. I'm going to feed you that whole weekend. It's June 7th through the 9th in Kansas City, Kansas, in the Quindaro neighborhood. And all that information will be on the website. Sign up, because I can only take 300 people. I can I can mm. comfortably handle that. And I can feed y'all. We're going to party. Because I, I guess down with mine. <laughs> I ain't playing with you. We're going to have a good time and be enlightened. There's a lot of things that I'm doing. Watch my movie. Now, you hear me use this term strong a lot. Strong is my favorite word. I wish my middle name was strong. And in my world, strong stands for strength, tenacity, resilience, and a sense of oneness, nobility, and grace. And that is my introduction to the sister on the show today. She's a strong lady coming out of that Florida. She told me, I said, what's the weather? Because I'm in Detroit. Y'all know she said, man, it's a lot warmer here than it is there. She had me on that. But that's all right. Come on, introduce yourself. Thank you for being on Strong Inspirations. Well, thank you, Anthony, for inviting me to be on here. I was just so intrigued by the things that you were saying in the beginning as the prologue. I wanted to go back a bit, but first I will tell your audience that my name, my name is Nadine McElwain Massey, and I'm going to say something about that name for just a minute. Where I am from actually is Ohio. So I do know what it's like in Detroit right now because I'm from Canton, Ohio. Okay. And in Canton, Ohio, I think the weather kind of merits what's going on in Detroit. Oh, sure. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Cold yeah, sure. snow and yeah. uh, what's it called? Lake effect winds? Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, my book that I wrote is about Canton, Ohio. It's not about Florida, but you mentioned some things about Florida. I've been here probably, well, since 2010. So we've got a chance to learn what it's like here in Florida also. Sure, sure. But my okay, book is... In Okay, no, I don't, I don't I don't mean no disrespect, okay. but I got to ask uh -huh. a couple of questions about you from all this to get to know you. And you've mm -hmm. already led into it. You were uh, born and raised in Canton, right? That's correct. Canton, Ohio. Okay. 
Okay, did you live in a black neighborhood, a mixed neighborhood, you know, that kind of thing? What was the dynamic of-, of, of Well, your... I'm gonna tell you because you, you already touched on it when you said about the young lady going to Gainesville as yeah. one of the first black students. I went to an elementary school. It was actually not in the city of Canton, but in Plain Local. And in Plain Local, there were two black students there, myself and my sister, until I had some younger cousins that came along. But when I went, that's the way it was. And, and I remember going into high school and all I could think about at that time was what period would my sister be eating so I'd have somebody to eat with. Fortunately, our schedules matched. And so we both had the same lunch period. But she and I were the only two students in a high school that was from seventh to 12th grade. Okay, well, hold on. how did that happen? How did you get to that school? Your parents thought that was a better education or something like that? Well, I'll tell close? you what, I'll tell you the story they told me. You know, this was, I was born in 1943, so I'm 80 years old. So um, back, I guess it was uh, depression, yeah, during the depression, there was a house available kind of out in what they people would refer to as the country, like the outskirts. It wasn't the suburbs, don't get me wrong. It was the uh -huh. outskirts of the country. And um, that house was available for, for I don't know, $2,000 or something like that. And mm -hmm. it was my understanding that everybody in my family put in cash. So they paid cash for this house that was out there with no running water, no inside plumbing, that kind of thing. And everybody in the family moved into that house. So we had aunts, uncles, um, great aunts and great uncles and cousins oh. and so forth. Everybody lived there. So it was in oh. the country. and. And the country was not the suburbs, but it was close enough. So we went to suburban schools. So that's oh, how, okay. and, and there wasn't any other young people, my sister's age or my age, my sister's a year older than I am. So yeah. we were, you know, close because yeah. of our age, but there were no other young people. There were some that went before us, a couple of cousins, you know, yeah. um, three of them to be exact. And the story about my one cousin is really devastating to me. Right before he was to graduate as the only African-American from this particular high school in this area, he got in a fight and I don't know if he got beat up or if he beat somebody up, but six months before he was to graduate, he quit school. So that's just one of the stories, but that's mm. how I got there. So we got there because we bought that house. When I was 14 years old, I moved back to the city because my mother still lived in the city. I moved back to the city and uh, lived with her there. Okay, how about this now? They, uh, so you only grew up with white kids? Yes. Did you play with them? And uh, was that a good thing? Um, how, how, how was that interaction? Well, yes and no. I played with some of them, but I had an opportunity because one of the girls that went to that school, um, she I remained friends with one. I mean, close friends with one. But she told me when I went to California for the first time, she said, one of our classmates is in California. So she said, she wants to see you. And I'm thinking, why does she want to see me now? She didn't want to see me when I was in eighth grade, seventh grade, sixth grade with her. And so she wants to see me now. I'll go see her. And I'm going to tell her how I felt about how I was treated at the school. So I told her, I said, you guys, you know, you never included me. I said, I was right there with you. And I had the highest, one of the highest English grades in the class. And I wasn't selected for anything. Said I, I went out for this. I said, and I wrote an essay for a young man so he could be, a, so we could be on the newspaper staff. They chose him and not me, but I wrote his essay. And wow. you know, those kinds of things happened, um, and it, it wasn't pleasant. But I told her, and you know what she said to me? Be hmm. surprised. Wow. She said, Nadine, we just didn't know. Hmm. We didn't know how you felt, and we didn't know how to act better. Yeah, I went okay. to one party they had. And I'll tell you why yeah. I went, because we we're all jumping rope outside of the school. And so they said, we're going to have a party. No, they said, let's have a party Friday night. I was right there. I said, that sounds like a great idea. And because I was there in the crowd, I went to that one party. But that was it. Mm, okay. Well, how did the administrators, did they, uh, I, I guess they did some too, racial stuff to you well, too a little bit. Well, um, Yes, they, they did. Um, but I had, I lived with my grandmother, grandfather, and an aunt and an uncle at that time. And um, my uncle introduced me to the Board of Education. And when I say it, 
He said, you just tell those people I'm going to go to the Board of Education if they bother you. So um, that's what I did. If they, if I had a problem, I tell my uncle said he's going to go to the Board of Education. So I had, um, I was a good girl, mm -hmm. um, polite, good student up until mm -hmm. about the fifth, no, about the sixth, seventh grade. And then that's when I started to feel funny. I mean, like I got the highest grade and they're not choosing me to be in the newspaper staff. I got this and I got that. And they're not recognizing that. They're not asking me to join them. So I became a little bit rebellious. And um, as a result of that, I was called and sent to the principal's office several times. And at one point I was there, it was my fifth grade teacher and she was in the office at the time. And I kind of thought she liked me when I had her for fifth grade. And uh, I, I, there was something involved in a younger girl. It was a younger white girl, kind mm -hmm. of a popular girl. And so she went to the office and she was crying. So the principal was asking me, explain what happened. So I said, and so so-and-so, I'll just call her Jolene. Mm -hmm. said, so, so Jolene started crying. That fifth grade teacher said, no, she didn't because Jolene doesn't cry. And if you say that again, I'll slap your face. Whoa! That's what she said to me. And I'll never Whoa. forget it. So at that point, I didn't say another word. And I thought, you mess with me and my uncle's going through the board of education. Yeah. That was the way I was. But she didn't. And I didn't do anything then. But I still had some other issues at yeah, this yeah, point yeah. later well, on. Well, yeah. that leads to this then. How, mm -hmm. how do you think Black people felt going through that, the isolation or whatever white people felt when they had no choice, they had no option. You came up with one that I'm going to go to the school board. But if you got no option, mm. how how demeaning could that be? How can you imagine that? I can't. Even even what we went through, it, it's very, very difficult. You mentioned about the, the swimmers, the scuba divers. Yeah. Well, before my husband and I moved here to Florida. Well, we still have the home in Ohio. I say that because I like it. And yeah. we live on a lake and it's called Myers Lake. It was an amusement park. And when we were young, we would all go there because that's where the church picnics were. And, you know, we just had a lot of fun. We had a roller coaster and, a, you know, mirror go around and Ferris wheel and all those things. But we never could swim in the lake. No black people could swim in the lake. And that thing just all in a lake. Was, in a lake. I mean, it wasn't Dorothy Dandridge's swimming yeah. pool where she yeah, put her yeah. toe in. We yeah. couldn't swim. So when my husband and I moved to Myers Lake, we bought a boat and we went swimming every time we could. And we would yeah. wave at all the white people that lived around there because at that point too, we were one of, I think just maybe one couple that lived on that lake with a boat. So yeah. it was kind of not revenge, but it was kind of yeah, like yeah, a statement. Yeah, yeah. No, I like, love it. I love know, it. Yeah, you we, tried your best to put us yeah, down, but yeah, still yeah. I rise. Yeah, there yeah. you go. There That's you right. go. Okay, let, let, let's go off just a tad. How mm -hmm. did your folks get to Canton? What where's the where's the mm -hmm. uh the southern connection? Where's the you know that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. My father was from Albany, Georgia. And my father uh, is now deceased, but he was a character. Matter of fact, I have my first novel coming out um, after January of, of 2024. And my thought, the main character is based on my father. So, you know, if you ever get to read that book, you'll understand yeah, more yeah. about it. But yeah. he says his story was, and I love hearing stories from people, you know, older than me and were back yeah. there. He sure. said he must have done something awfully bad in Georgia because when he was two years old, he was put on a train and sent away from Georgia to Canton, Ohio to live with his mother's sister. So I don't know if that's true, but I do know they're from Georgia and that's, they came up one, you know how it goes in the yeah. migration. One family member came, then another family member came, yeah, yeah, and they yeah, just yeah. kept doing that. So, but my father says he came by himself at two years old. Mother, at two years old, that's what he said. And, and until his mother could come up, and I remember, you know, being born there in Ken, all of her sisters were in like a real small neighborhood right around um, uh, northeast. Yeah. Oh man. So, what what yeah, about your mother's what side? What about your mother's side? Well, my side? mother's side was from Akron, Ohio. I don't know their southern connection. Okay. Because her okay. father still lived 30 miles north in Akron, Ohio. And my cousins there and aunts and uncles, we would visit them all the time. But I never heard their stories uh, like I heard okay. ours. 
Yeah. What 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 is what what's in Canton? What what why do black people move to Canton? Is there a big uh, uh, oh yeah a company that hired black people? Or whatever, yes, whatever? there's several. One right. of course is Fortune 500 com company. Now it's the Timken Company, where they make steel. Well, basically steel, but it used to be the roller roller bearing capital. That was the number one oh. place if you needed a roller bearing, and everything that moved needed a roller bearing. So that was one. We also had Republic Steel, later U.S. Steel oh. in Canton. So it hired, you know, hundreds of people. As a matter of fact, my oh. present husband used to work at Republic Steel. Oh, um, okay. Let's see. Then we, we had several other factories there that today, you know, barely employ 300 people. Oh, but back man. then they did. But when you ask me about Canton, most people will recognize Canton, Ohio, as the home of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Right. So every August we get big publicity. When did you start liking uh, Black history? Is that something that, and an understanding history, an affinity for history? Well, first of all, when I went to that school, because I was taught a version of history that even as a young child, I didn't accept. I didn't accept their answer as to why I was a black child and they weren't. I didn't accept um, the fact that they called us slaves. I mean, I didn't take that um, at all. And so because of that, I began researching, even as a young girl on my own, my origin. And it was, and the day that I read um, W.E.B. W. E. B. Du Bois book, Black right. Folks, or The Souls of Black Folks. This, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I read that book and I thought, this is the answer. The, all that other stuff they were telling me was crap. The answer that he said was that our um, uh, complexion, hair, nose, all those things could be explained geographically and uh, ecology wise because of migration and that's and right. the things and the adaptations that you needed. And I, well, I taught history too. That was my favorite subject, as you can tell. But I, I okay. taught history for many, many years um, at Timken High School in Canton. And I would tell my students um, that I would say, you know, this is what W.E.B. Du Bois thinks. What do you think about this? Okay, and well, it let, just let me made ask you this. Absolute sense to me. I love it. And that is the answer. So, what, what did they say? What did the white people say to, why you're black? Well, they never said, oh, oh, what the room, what they said. Well, yeah. first of all, we were the um, the part of the tribe of Noah, you know, Ham. Yeah. We were Hamites. I think that's the word, the term, the yeah. Bible. Used. And we were marked with a black scar. And, and all black people were the descendants of Ham, who was cursed because he looked at Noah, I guess, was the story. So really? we were all their descendants. That was number one. Of course, number two, we were the stage between ape and white people. You know, hold on. We okay, hold on. Hold on. Apes. Oh, you, you got me. <laughs> when when, did, when would they say this in black, in black history, Mona? Or just, oh, did, no, no. Did, we didn't have a black history. Come up? Oh, no. That was taught. It was taught in, in, in schools. And they also said how happy we were Um to be treated as slaves because that was the best life for us. And they they said that Harriet Beecher Stowe was wrong and what she said in her book was incorrect. So I read her book, I think, in the fifth grade because I'm thinking, is this right? Are they telling me the truth? And so I went and read the book and I just agreed what they said. They basically classified that book as melodramatic. And I did not think it was melodramatic. I thought it told the truth. And it not only told the truth about the Southerners who enslaved Black people, but it also told about how the Northerners benefited from it, from, from what the Southerners were doing, how they made so much money in the North because of how the Southerners were. Well, why, why would they bring that up? Was that bringing that was up the history, for your correct? Yeah, but I'm saying, was that, was, my, my point is, is, was that to make, because you sitting there and they were going to say this is about you or this is the uplift of the white race? No, neither. It was their history curriculum. That's the way history was taught. And it, I mean, it was taught that way, not only in, in our school where it was a suburban school, it was taught in the inner cities. That's the way history was taught us. All wow. of us, I don't, I don't, you know, I, even the 
uh, friends I had in school, they never were taught that as black people, we were um, descendants of Africans who were kings and queens and had money. And the wealthiest person ever to live was Mafusa. Ma yeah, yeah, that's yeah right. the wealthiest yeah. person. Never taught that. That we didn't learn about the the three kingdoms: Mali, yeah, um, Ghana. Right. Yeah, we that's never right. learned that. Nobody taught us that. Matter of fact, I I never heard of the term Mesopotamia until I yeah. went to college. Yeah, and I yeah. thought I was educated, you know, when it came yeah, to history. Sure. But okay. we learned Western civilization, not Eastern, not Africa, Western yeah. civilization. Okay, let me say this. So now you mm -hmm. sitting there and you listening to this, and you 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 now you you got your eyes, you're a little conscious that this don't make sense. Did you say that to somebody and then get the backlash of it? Never did. I never did until we wrote this book. There you go. We're going to get to the book. There you go. Okay. There you go. But right. I never said anything to those people. I never said anything to anybody um, because it was just me. You know, just me. Did, I mean, did I you told, told my you, parents, my grandparents. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Did yeah. you find a white person that kind of sided with you to say, hey, hold on. Uh, do you believe no. that? <laughs> anything like that? No. Uh, nothing, nothing like that. Oh, nothing. man. No. So you are not, you are island by yourself. Yes, with my sister, but she didn't have the same issues. I mean, and and I had cousins who loved the school and did well, younger cousins and did well. Mm -hmm. And my mm -hmm. granddaughter went to the same school, and she ended up being homecoming queen, prom oh, queen, head okay. cheerleader. I mean, yeah. it, was, it blew my mind so much that I used to write articles for the newspaper. I wrote it. I wrote the article in the newspaper because it just truly blew my mind the change that had occurred from my generation there to my granddaughter's generation at the same school. Oh. So, but so, so a white person never came to you and said, hey, I, I'm kind of, what they're oh, saying is wrong or, or never, I feel for you or nothing never. like that. Mm -hmm. and, no. and so now your eyes are open to black history. What, what does that do for you that uh, to understand how great black people are at that point? Do you poke it, your chest out a little bit? Do you, you know, I don't know. I think it validates me as a person. And and when I mentioned that book, and I told you I never said anything until we started writing the book. That the history of writing that book was not just me. There was it was a committee that started it. It's a kind of a long history, but it was a committee who decided it was time to put this in writing, the history of black people in Canton. So we made um, several, you know, meetings and people contributed and so forth. But we got to the point where I told them, I said, look, I'll write the book for you. Cause I, I know I can fairly, I write fair. I'm not mm -hmm. saying I'm good or yeah, yeah, yeah. I sure, do right. Sure, sure. So anyway, I told them I would do that. I said, under one condition, I said that we not use the word slave, but we use the word enslaved. Yes, there you go. Exactly. There you won't go. believe the resistance I got from the black people at that meeting. Oh man. Yes. Now this book was published in 2019. We then, probably started in 2014, 2015. Yeah. But back then, I, I was almost in tears because nobody would agree that we not use that word slave. Yeah. I said it doesn't truly describe. I never heard of it slave until later in life. Yeah. Well, how what year? Because I know in 2014 we argued. It. Really? Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you this then, uh -huh. and, and then okay. I'm, I'm gonna ask you to hold up the book. What okay. is what? There's a state of mind to say slave. Like what? What? What's the? What's your dynamic on that? Because uh, somebody okay. explained it to me, and I, I, I wish I'd have wrote it down. What's your dynamic in not using? It's the very word very simple. Slave right, is right, a noun. Right. It's a noun. Okay. So it, a noun is the name of a person, place, or thing. We were, we were not those we were not either we weren't the person as a slave we weren't the place person place or thing uh, that's i'm not explaining it well let me go yeah, back yeah, now you're getting there okay well one is a noun now the word enslaved is a description of a condition there you go so what we were we were in this condition we were placed in and personally i think that if you view yourself as a slave that's in your mind that's not what somebody else calls you. Do you remember the movie Moonlight? 
Yeah. I think that was the name of it. Um, that yeah, man's yeah. name who I can't pronounce, Marsha Layla Ali. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, he the little boy asked him, he says, um, he said, What is a, a fag, I believe? And and his answer was, a fag is a name that people call you to make you feel bad. And how good does it does do white people feel when they say those people were slaves? That's not what happened. They enslaved us. They That's forced right. us into that condition. And so That's it was right. a condition. Once you That's got right. out of that condition, you were no longer a slave. That's right. So That's you, the you, answer. Yes, because you're always mm -hmm. going to be a man if you're a man, yes. I think. Yes. I mean, yes. maybe that's, that's right. That's right, 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 right. But, um, you know, being a slave is in your mind. And, and even the story of Kunta Kinte, he never accepted that. That's right. He, he never accepted that. And I know I was doing a presentation with um, um, some other people. I'll just say it that way. Yeah. Right. And the person said that, my great 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 grandfather was a slave at such and such a plantation and so i i didn't want to um you know contradict her in front of everybody but i wasn't gonna let that slide either so i said to them i said her great 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 might have been a slave i said but my forefathers never were slaves that's why i stand here they never accepted that as their condition and i believe that because i mean as their their title that's of that's who they were. I right. think if they would have accepted that they were slaves, I wouldn't be sitting here today. That go. is a mindset. That's a mindset. Yes. Okay, now, oh man, you, that, that's so good. And, and, and you got me, uh, I'm gonna make a movement on my own and not use the word slave. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, I, that, one of the really white a... persons in that audience said, what are you gonna do when you have to quote Martin Luther King? And what, what was the statement that he that Martin Luther King made? I, I can't remember, but it did say the word slave. I said, when you're going to quote him, quote him. Because you're putting it in quotes as this is what somebody said. You are not pronouncing that this young man or this young lady was a slave. Right. Because the truth is, the Europeans were conquerors. They And, they, and the Africans say that to this day. That's they right. came here. They conquered us. And then they enslaved us and took us to their country. That's but right. a lot of them say that they brought slaves from Africa. That's not true. They brought free people from Africa and yeah. enslaved them the yeah. day they got on that boat or went That's into right. that, those galleys. All right. So so how did, uh, show us the book. Show oh, us okay. the book. Yeah, yeah show I'll us the book. Yeah, 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 show this us the, the book. book. Right here. Yeah. African Americans oh. of Canton, Ohio. Oh, okay. Uh, the, uh, before we talk about it, and, and this leads up to what happened when you told them I, I'm not going to use the word slave. They had to agree, and you said okay, or no after backlash, or you you don't have. Do you have the word slave in there, or how, how did that work? I man? think um, at one point because it was describing uh, a, a gentleman who should be well known, but he, he's not. His name was Jacob Gaston, and he owned all this property in in Canton, Ohio. And um, they said he was born a slave. And that's another thing, you know. It's like yeah. Trevor's book, Trevor Noah's book, Born a Crime. And the crime was there, but you weren't born it, if you understand. Yeah. But yeah. I'm digressing. Yeah. And, and yeah. Yeah. Um, So, no, it wasn't easily accepted. Matter of fact, um, I'm not easy to cry, but I had tears. Because I couldn't understand how Black people couldn't understand what I was saying. And that they preferred the term slave to, to enslave. And so a lot of the Black educated, well-educated Black people were saying, um, but that's what we were, or that's the proper name, or that you're changing history, or it's revisionist history, you know, those kinds of things. And, and there was one young man who I could kiss right now who stood up and said, well, what's going to hurt if we do it Mrs. McElwain's way? That's what the young people used to call me on. What's going to mm. hurt if we do it this Mrs. McElwain's way? Maybe we'll start a trend and we'll just eliminate that word. And I said, well, how do you think young people feel, you know, when they hear the word they were slaves? I mean, tell it like it was how it actually happened. We were not slaves. We were enslaved. And I know the stories of what everybody says. There was slavery in Africa and there was and, you know, and that. But we had something called chattel slavery. That's right. That's the different kind of slave. That's when you are not a person, you are a property. 
a piece of property. That's what happened in the United States. That's right. So what happened in Africa was a totally different thing. That's and totally other countries thing. that, yeah. quote, had slavery. But it yes. wasn't the, the chattel slavery of the United States of America. That's right. Yeah, that is a difference. So now, uh, the, the guy you just mentioned, uh, he's a black guy who had all yes, the land and stuff. What's his story? Oh, his name was Jacob. And, and you, and so hold on, let me say this. So, what okay. do you do in the book? Is you feature black people who are out of Canton, and you tell the history. What is the the premise of the book? Well, the book is it's called Treasures of Start of Black History. Treasures of Black History. So we did a number of things. We um, talked about all the people, all, as many as we could research, and we did spend five years researching all of the firsts. And, and, you know, I think another thing I'd like to see die out is the word first, the first African-American, the first African-American to do this, to do that, because I don't want it to be just the first anymore. I'd like it to be the 10th or the 11th or the 12th. Right. But at I any rate, you, yeah. so we started out doing that kind of thing. And then we went um, to the history. I thought that that was the part that I actually did right, which was um, the history of Canton, Ohio. Because when I was teaching American history, at Timken High School, I also taught Canton history because I thought people need to know about, you know, kids need to know about where they live. So Canton was um, founded in 1805. So we talk about what happened to Canton, who founded it. And then uh, when the first black man who came to um, Canton, Ohio, and what he did as, you know, work um, and why he came, he came for work, but, um, we talk about him and then we talk about the other early blacks. We had a, a watch clock, watch company here. It's called Duber Hampton Watch Works or something close to that. And so back then to be, you know, you, you, you put the, um, the things in the watch, it had to be done by hand. And so okay. we, there was one very famous um, one that they, that the company sent for, he was black and the company sent for him and, and brought him um, to Canton, Ohio. So that was one. Then the very first doctor, I think we've had a total, well, at that time when the book was written, I think it was five you know, medical doctors. But since then, it seems like it's just mushroom. And lawyers, like my daughter, and I'm kind of proud that she was the first native born black female to become a lawyer um, really? and practice law, yes, in Canton, Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't realize that at the time. But a friend of mine said, you know, your daughter's the first one who's ever done that. And I thought, you're right. Because, you know, in our history, there were some lawyers there who were older than her, but they had come from other places. There were two Black females older than her, but they had come from other places. She was the first one to go to um, college. She went to the University of Akron Law School, graduate, set up a practice in Canton, Ohio. Female. And if I if I may say, you probably talking about that might have been what the seven the eighties or something. Like graduated that? from high school in seventy eight. So, so you're talking high... about eighty five, yeah. eighty nine mm -hmm. to yes, be the first that's... black oh man, first black female, native born, native. Yeah, yeah, right, right, born, right, right, yeah, right, yeah. right, right, right. So um, we talked about those first, and then we talked about some of the um, social services that were in Canton that were helping people like the Urban League. I did a campaign. I'll say I did it. I, our Urban League, we were going to lose it. And, and it hurt me so badly because, you know, the Urban League, I give credit for saving my life. You know, after I was at that school in the country school, the suburban school where I got black was at the Urban League. That's where I learned so much about black people and, and, and our rights and things like that. So anyway, we were going to lose our Urban League, and um, it came to me that we could do um, a campaign to raise $100,000. We called it 100 in 100. So we were going to raise $100,000 in 100 days, and we did it. And, oh, and we, did, we did not ask um, white um, corporations or white individuals, per se, for money. It's not that we wouldn't take it. I mean, we got yeah, some. Yeah, 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 you yeah, know, yeah, people sure, did. Sure, sure. But goal was to get it out of the black community in Canton because you know I think you know but our black communities have money because you know what our gross yeah. natural pro product yeah, yeah. is how much money we spend <laughs> you know yeah, so we got true. money yeah, yeah. um and and yeah. the churches prove it yeah you know about how much money the philanthropists give to the churches yeah. so we felt we needed to redirect some of that money 
Good. you know, back into the community. It worked. And today, the Urban League, it's called the Greater Stark County Urban League, is viable. Oh, that's and, beautiful. And just, yes, and just got a new director, our, yeah. the retiring director. She was a dynamo. Yes, and, uh, that's beautiful. She got a Lifetime Achievement Award. I was so proud yes. of her. But yes. um, we got a new director, and, and now the Urban League is thriving. Yeah. yeah do this. Uh, share a couple uh, uh, stories out of the book, you know, Black people out of Kent that, you know, we should hear about uh, that, you know, most people don't know of. Okay, I'll tell you one right off the top of my head. His name is right. Stephen Stephen Perry. And Stephen Perry um, <laughs> lived in the same neighborhood that I lived in, but not that suburban neighborhood. When I moved into the city, we moved mm -hmm. kind of into a really poor neighborhood, mm -hmm. but it had running water mm -hmm. and a, a kitchen and a toilet. And I thought I was rich at that point when we got mm -hmm. that. But okay. he lived in that neighborhood and um, he you know, used to be the newspaper boy. Well, he went to Timken High School. Timken was a vocational high school. And it was sponsored by the Timken Company, the Fortune 500 Company. So they, it was a vocational school, and they would take people directly from the high school and put place them in the jobs that they built the high school to provide for them. So he was one of those. He rose all the way up to, I believe, a vice president in the company. And the Timkins were um, not necessarily conservatives, but definitely Republicans. Hmm. So um, they gave a lot of money to the Republican Party. So when, uh, well, George H.W. Bush got elected, they were looking for um, Black people, and Stephen Perry became the, mm, I'm trying to think of his name, correct, or his title. It was the director of, I think it was the Office of Budget and Management. Okay, okay, maybe. okay, so like that, yeah. Yeah, the like the landlord yeah. for the government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So he, he became that. And then yeah, afterwards, yeah. he became the president and CEO of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So he had two oh, jobs. Really? To yes. Yeah, yeah. So okay. he's one yeah, um, yeah. that you know, I think out of Canada. And of course, we got, you know, the stars. We got Macy Gray and we got the OJs. Oh, oh really? OJs. Yes, they used to live right on the corner from us. And they would uh, sing under the streetlights. So when you see those yeah. old movies with those guys doo wopping yeah. Under the street lights, that was yeah. the OJ. Yeah, so proud of it. them. Yeah, yes, 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 just yes. so proud of them. Yes. Uh, Walt and Eddie um, at this time, and then um, some others, you know, along the way. Yes. And then, yes. Um, uh, let's think, oh, I said Macy Gray and the OJs. Oh, and Jim, Bur no, not he didn't come from Canton. But he played for the Browns. I was thinking. Yeah, Jim that's Brown. right. That's right. Yeah, he's not from Canton. But, um, his cohort, the one of the first, one of the first. I think he became um, pro football the same year that Jackie Robinson became the uh, baseball. The baseball, really? Was yeah, out of Ken. and he's from Kent. Yeah, but the name's escaping me. Yeah. Right. What What is the um, um, what's the black neighborhood in Kent? What's it called? Well, we it was the southeast. But now it's the southeast, northeast, near northwest, and near southwest. Oh. So um, our population in Canton, the city of Canton, you know, went from ten percent to probably around forty percent now. Oh really? Yeah, that's the city though, because you know yeah. there was a lot of white flight and a lot of people okay. moved out and okay. you know, and and when it was the southeast, um, then. When it was the Southeast, uh, the people from the Southeast moved out, too, because we did, quote, urban renewal. Yes. You know how that They is. had a freeway run through and take Heck out some yes, of the black now. They sure did. And if you remember when I told you I lived out in, in the country, right. we on the street that I lived on, at I, I lived with my grandparents. Next door right. to them was his my grandfather's sister. Across the street from the house I lived in was my grandfather's mother. So that was my great grandmother. Right. Then below her was her granddaughter because it was a two story apartment. It was, right. it was um, her daughter right. um, up the street. Now, there was a white family to the left of us, I'll say. And then there were four houses which were all black people. Um, you know, there were just people, yeah. people that went to our church, but they were black people. Yeah. Sure. And then further down the road, there was a an alley where some whites lived, but also some blacks <laughs> had built two nice houses there. 
this was the northwest part of town, the town that was the white, the part of town that was the whitest. Okay. That's where the highway went. And I always believed in my heart that the highway, you know how they make a Y, and you know. Yeah, come up. yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. I always yeah. believed that that was to get rid of us out of that neighborhood because they did. They took all the houses. There's one house standing out there that's still owned. I believe it's still owned by my aunt's family. She's deceased, but I think the family still owns that house. Oh, man. But in this book that I wrote, I put some evidence in there that I'm right. It was in the newspaper, and it said that that intersection where the cars go like this, most accidents ever right there at that intersection and mm. it's obvious to me why because it mm. doesn't make any sense the way they built it but yeah. they protected the white neighborhoods yeah 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 well, i talk about that in my book uh, uh -huh. uh, highways through black neighborhoods they call right. it back in the day yeah have, have there been some black politicians in canton oh yeah we've had i yes. had a mayor or anything like not that not yet we okay. almost did last time but okay. not that yeah. that that bothers me too. Yeah. We would have had a great mayor if he yeah. would have won. But yeah. yes, we've had the matter of fact, the very first, I think, in oh in yeah, in Ohio. I was gonna say the nation, but I think it's just Ohio. The first um black councilwoman was a woman by the name of Esther Archer. Okay. Beautiful lady, beautiful lady. Yeah. So yeah. she became a councilwoman. And she her quote was, you had to fight to get in. And you had to fight to stay in because yeah. they tried to, they tried to um, convict her of something, something that she didn't do. You know, yeah, they, that they, they'll, they'll, they'll go for the juggling. Yeah, they did that to me. I was on council for two years too. Oh, is that right? Yes, that's right. I was on city council yeah, for two okay. years. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and it did kind of happen to me too. Yeah, they, I they said kind of. Especially yeah. if you're doing good, if you're making right. some noise, they'll come after you. Well, I wasn't doing that good. I made a mistake. But yeah, I mean, I, I my mistake was I didn't do as good as I could have. But yeah. yes, and then we've had um we had one um state representative who should have been the one that was elected mayor. Okay. It, they gerrymandered his position to in the beginning so that as a Democrat he could get elected. Then they gerrymandered it uh, when the Republicans took over so he couldn't get elected. So he lost okay. his Okay. And um, well, right now, and see, I, I don't follow it as closely as I used to because sure. I'm not there in Canton. Yeah. But sure. I know at one point we have a, a council of nine members and I heard them say about dropping it to eight. But I think there are five black council people. Oh, really? OK. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's a service director of our city yeah. is. is and I see, no, not the service director. The um, safety director is a black yeah. female. Matter of fact, okay. Steve Perry's daughter. And okay. we had a black service director. Oh, okay. Who, yes, but not anymore. But yeah, we've had some politicians, but not, we've got one now, which is kind of a good story, I think. Um, a young man, smart, a lawyer, who beat out a uh, person that had been um, the district attorney for mm. almost maybe, I'll say 15 years. But the way he beat him out was that our county is a Republican county and a lot of people voted for Trump. Well, this young black man ran as a Republican and got in. All Republicans mm. won, not one Democrat. And he happened to be a Republican mm. and he got in. And I think people were really surprised because he had some posters out, but no pictures. Yeah, that's how you do that deal. Um, and I, I don't mean to divert. Well, I do mean You're to. okay. Let me ask you this. Uh, mm -hmm. kind of, And we're going to end on a high note still. Was there ever a race riot or anything like that in Canton? Not a riot. There were several incidents. And, you know, and, and even Black people downplayed them. And, it, I mean, I'm not innocent of that. There was, when they, they, the neighborhood I told you about was the country neighborhood I lived in. They did the same thing in the city. We used to have a park down there called Jackson Park where the black um, baseball leagues, men and women would go play. And, uh, you know, every Sunday afternoon, we all gather around there, picnic baskets, and just a wonderful time. And they put a highway through it. They put a highway through that whole area, you know, 
people had homes. When I lived in, in the country, so to speak, mm -hmm. one of the problems I saw was that um, we did, we were the only ones that had houses. When I went to the city, everybody seemed to live in apartments of some kind, where my mother lived at least. Mm -hmm. So what happened was that I did, there were houses in the Southeast and um, they took them all. They, mm -hmm. they relocated people, but a lot of people relocated into the suburbs, the suburban areas, yeah, not yeah, within sure. the city. Sure. Yeah. So it was, okay. it's really destructive. It's in our street. I don't know about your street, but you know, every city had a street. Uh, our street was called Cherry Avenue. Okay. That's like, the main uh, thoroughfare. Yes. Okay. That's where okay. people were. That's where the businesses were. And we did, yeah. a, we did quite a bit on Cherry Street. Okay. Uh, somewhat on the destruction of it. Sad. Very okay. Sad. <laughs> now, um, uh, one more. Uh, is there a festival or something like that that Black people come back to who lived in Canton or anything of that? No. Uh, well, um, not some... per se like a homecoming or reunion, but we do have lots of festivals, you know. We yeah. have June, Juneteenth. Is oh, y'all do that? Okay, cool. Oh, cool. yeah, we do do Juneteenth. Matter of fact, the people here in, in Canton or have been doing it for many, many years, way before it became a national holiday. Oh, I mean, cool, one young cool. one young lady who served on the school board with me was kind of responsible, and she'd do it in the park even if only 10 people showed up. Oh, cool. But now it's cool. become pretty big. And there's yeah. that. But you know what? I think this is the thing that's most integrated about Ken. It's a pro football hall of fame. Yeah. And that weekend um, is like... Everybody is involved in one way or another. Oh, I'm really? talking about the youngest child to the oldest. Uh, okay, okay. In the I last love two it. years, they've had gospel concerts. Oh, I love it. I love it. I do well, too. Show, well, show us the book again. Show us the book. Oh, how, do okay. how do people get the book? How do people get the book? Oh, the book is on Amazon. Oops. It's on Amazon. Yeah, it's oh. on Amazon. African Americans okay. of Canton, Ohio. And okay. it's a book that everybody who has interest in their city and their um, town should write it about their city and their town. Yes, yes. My husband is from a small place called Waynesburg, Ohio. I have to tell you these two stories. Yeah, yeah, He's go ahead. from Waynesburg, Ohio. And, you know, I said, I didn't know a lot about it, although it's like only eight miles from Canton. So I said, you got to take me and show me where you live. Because mm -hmm. they came, people came to Waynesburg because of the brick mills. I think brick bricks they made bricks out there mm -hmm. so it wasn't mills but it was brick yards okay yeah. mm -hmm. there was a lot of clay and they made um bricks out there so a lot of people moved up from the south and landed in in waynesburg by a lot of people i mean mm, enough to have two churches okay, okay? yeah so um I, I went there and he said well this is where you used to live i said well, how could you live there it's a river he said well it didn't used to be it was houses, playgrounds, not a school because they didn't have schools. Their churches were their school for when he was, uh, and he's my age too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Yeah, so he said, but that was their neighborhood. Now it's water. And I say that, and and they do have information about Waynesburg, but they haven't written it in a book. That's the problem. So when those yeah. people with the information go, everything goes with them. That's yeah. why we wrote this book. Yeah, I we love it. All that information to, to be lost. And there's one other thing that I said I was going to teach you. Things. Yeah, yeah, yes. Just like my husband's place in Waynesburg, um, there was a the first settlement in Stark County, and that's where Kent is in Stark County. The first settlement of African Americans, according to all the records, was in a place called Lexington Township. Lexington Township is part of Alliance, Ohio, which is eight miles east of Canton. So um, they said that in Lexington Township, the Black people lived. They had homes. They had, you know, all of this. And they had a church and they had schools. Nothing is left. You can't even prove that they lived there. Matter of fact, the information isn't strong enough to say that it did happen. The information is there. I believe it. A lot of other people believe it, but it's all gone. That's yeah. why you got to write down our histories. Yeah, there's probably a cemetery. I'm sure, though. It's a it's a creek. Yeah. 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 Oh, the creek ran through it. Oh my yeah, God. No, not through it. They filled it in. Yeah. yeah. Nothing oh. but water. 
Oh man, oh, Big Sandy Creek and Little Sandy Creek. Oh, is that right? Well, hey, I, I, I thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, I've never been to Canton. I've been through many cities in Ohio, Cincinnati, and Toledo, and Dayton, and uh, I, and I ain't even been to Columbus, to tell you the truth. But you know, driving uh -huh. I seventy five, I've been through them, and uh, Canton is one that I would love to come to. Uh, and and hang out and see the people in Canton, and so we'll we'll talk offline about that. Uh, and uh, and thank you for, again for coming on the show. And everybody, I told you, man, <laughs> she said it so succinctly. And 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 how about this, my viewers? Did y'all hear how high she rose out of that small town, mm -hmm. city council, school board, teacher, very successful lady. They named the school, they named the school administration after me, the school administration building. I think that was something that really knocked me for a loop because I'm I sure. just never thought it was it's called the Canton City Schools. No, the Nadine McElwain Canton City Schools oh my God. Um, Administrative Center. Listen to and that, people. <laughs> my first husband was Albert H. McElwain, and he was in charge of the Start Metropolitan Housing Authority. And that building is named after him. So my grandchildren live now in New York and in California. But when they come to town, they got to go to pass those two buildings every time. Ain't that something? Hey, hey, everybody, this is she. Uh, I, I hope she hear me, and I know she does. I got an icon in front of me. <laughs> I'm not sure about icon. that, but I got an but, icon uh, in front of me. I ain't got a building named after her. Let me tell you, folks, get that book. Because she's yes. committed and she taught oh. me something today that I'm going to stick to. No more slave. From this point on, it's mm -hmm. enslaved because that's a condition. We weren't them people. That's right. not who we were. That's who they wanted us to be. Exactly. They titled us that. That's right. That wasn't it. And mm -hmm. many of us gave up our life to fight against that condition and those circumstances. And then they were not slave it no more or enslaved no more, if I'm saying it correctly. All right? Um, right. Hit the subscribe button on this show. Hit the like button on this video because there is no love button. And I know you love what she said. Hit the notifications bell. Uh, show us the book once again. Uh, can I show you my first book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show, yeah. This, this is the on first this book I wrote. And yeah. it is about yeah. Reggie Rucker. You, I don't think you can even get this book anymore, but yeah. it was it was my start, and it was entitled From Ghetto to God. Reggie Rucker played for the Cleveland Browns. I so I that was his name. Yeah. And it came from him to this one. And I have another one coming out in July. In yeah, January. we're gonna we well, you come back on. We're gonna talk some more. I got okay. this shoe. You gotta come on just once. Hey, you know, All right. way. we come, we come right. back on and we plug in okay. on this show. Mm -hmm. And do you have a website yourself or anything like that? No, but with the new book, it's called yeah. Rolling Stone. I'm going to get a yeah. website. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't yeah. have a website anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, you can find that book on 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 Amazon, and Amazon, that will yes. support support the uh, the cause. Uh, to you, my sister. Oh no, everybody! Before you do that, go to my website, businessintheblack.net. Learn about all I, I'm doing. Get you a copy. I of wrote it down. Yep, and get you a copy of the book. And then everybody, I, I, and to you, my sister, I say this, and I mean this sincerely. Uh, I want you to stay strong, stay safe, stay on your grind. Keep educating them people in your the ways that you do and you deem fit. Keep giving of yourself as you have, because it has worked. You've helped strangers. There's no question about it. And you've educated many people, not just in Canton and out that region, but throughout the country, particularly because you and them other folk have decided that, let me chronicle what has happened here, the good that has happened here. You put it down in history. Thank you for doing that. Letting us know. This, this, this permeates across the, the globe of what happened in Canton. And the black folks that got there one way or another and made that little town a greater town. Y'all did that. Thank Absolutely. you for that. Uh, everybody, with that, I'll say, you got any, uh, is there a question, a closing remark, anything that you want to tell us? 
Mm, I guess I, I just want to thank you. And I'm going to say this, even though it sounds like I'm bragging. Y'all don't um, brag on this show, too. I think I am the person that has my name on more buildings and public structures in the city of Canton than anybody else. And that's because the year I got on the school board, we built all new schools. So there is a plaque in all the schools, practically every one of them, that has my name on it as a member of the board. And then there's the city council stuff. too. So that's mm -hmm. good. But yeah, um, cool. I'm really pleased with the children I raised because they're doing wonderful things. Yeah. Some of, so, I don't know how far you go, but my son is a newscaster in L.A. and he goes by the name of Randy Mack. So oh, maybe man, some man. of your listeners have seen him yeah. on television. Yes, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, that's you. So I, I'm so happy to be here, yeah, and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I appreciate you. your comments. I yes. truly appreciate. It. Yeah, I don't thank think you. Enough people hear those good comments. So yeah, I, no, thank you, thank yeah. you. I'm gonna meet you one day. I, I, I come yes, down to Florida. <laughs> you, come to, you come to Canton in yeah, August, yeah. and we will show you a good time. It's done. All right. We're going to make, make that and, happen. And following the Pro Football Hall of Fame, the next week is the um, Black History, I mean, the, the HBCU's annual oh. game. It's played right in the same stadium as the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Oh, okay. That'd be yes. a time to come. Okay. And All the right. Black the Black Hall of Fame, the historic Black universities, colleges and universities Hall of Fame is right in the, in the same building as the Pro Football Hall of Fame. You got really? something to come to see. Yeah. yeah, you got something to come to see. Okay, right. it's a done deal. Done deal. I like going places too. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. We out. Bye-bye. Right. Uh -huh. Bye.